With the U20 World Cup in blue are coming up, we are currently two sets of games away from determining which 23 players will get the highest salaries and who will make the final roster. In this video, I'll go over all 47 potential players and the likelihood they will make the roster. Before getting straight into the characters, I want to emphasize that there will be no more eliminations even for the fodder characters, and if they don't make the team, they aren't inherently eliminated from blue lock. They will still be part of the preliminary squad, which is between 22 and 50 players, which so happens to fit all the survivors. Although I'm no expert on the U20 Cup, it seems like there should be 21 survivors instead of 23 like their normal World Cup, but for now, I'll just assume 23 being part of the team, like the manga stated. Another issue that may come up is that the FIFA guidelines state we need 3 goalkeepers for a team, and since we only have 2 known, we may see an unexpected character make the roster. So to begin with, I want to say I expect all 46 Blue Lock players to play at least one game and get a salary, and so I'll start with the more important characters with the highest chance and end with the least likely. First up is Isugi, the main protagonist and the one who will lead the U20 team to victory. He has been integral to Barca de Munich's wins and will likely have the highest salary by the end of the arc and cement himself as Blue Lock's ace, and so he will definitely be part of the final roster. Next up is Kunigami. He survived the wildcard and I doubt he won't make the team again. He already has a high salary and will likely score one more goal in the PXG match as his rival is Shido, for a total of 3 goals. As I'm expecting him to develop a lot in the PXG match and retain his old hero persona, I'm confident he will make it. Batra has taken over FC Barca and has one of the highest salaries even though the team is trash. He is the best dribbler in blue lock, and as one of the primary characters since the beginning of the series, he'll definitely make the team, even if his team end up going winless. The final egoist four member is Chigiri, currently the fastest blue lock player, and with his golden formula makes him extremely strong. He was the only Manchine player in the latest match to score, and leave a good impression, and with two more games, he will make the final roster. Another team Z member guaranteed is Gagamaru. He is currently our only prominent goalkeeper and the only one to have highlighted moments in his position, and so he is here to stay. Debuting with a hat-trick and becoming Uber's ace, Baru will definitely make the team. He has scored 5 goals over 2 games with one being a super goal, and continues to have a top 3 salary, and it would be shocking if he didn't make the roster. And next up is Nagi. He was seen as Manchine's ace in scoring a super goal in his match against Bastard Munich and doing so started him off with an insanely high salary. However, he had a horrific game against PXG and his salary got dropped hard, but I'm expecting him to rejuvenate a new ego and get development before the U20 World Cup starts. As such a prominent character in the story and getting his own spin-off, I'm confident he'll make the final roster. And I can't talk about Naki without Ryo. He had a great performance in the Manchine match and awakened a partial metavision. He is the only character with Naki to get a salary drop after a poor performance, but his comments saying next game they'll step up makes me believe in their development in the remaining two games. Ryo also wants to win the World Cup with Naki, and playing the U20 World Cup will be a stepping stone before then, and I don't see either one not making the final team. Itoshi Rin has been the primary rival for Isagi since the second selection and currently has the highest salary. Scoring 5 goals in 2 games and being Isagi's last hurdle before the World Cup, his value will definitely be within the top 23 and likely second overall by the end, thus making the roster. Hiori is another player I'm extremely confident will make the final roster. He is the best midfielder with amazing dribbling, passing and football IQ, and although he did say in the match he would quit, he goes on to find a new ego and retract this comment. Another person I'm confident will make the roster is Yukamiya. He is probably our second best dribbler and only notable left fullback. He has shown an extreme ego of being the best striker in the world and makes sense for him to play in the final roster. He does have eye problems, but AX do seem invested in Yukamiya, offering a good bid and treatment, and I don't think it really affects him making the final roster. Especially with all the development and backstory, and potentially displaying more as he stated before the Ubers match where he will prove his worth. Those 11 players to me are basically 100% locked in, and I'd be shocked if any of them didn't make the final roster. The next few characters I say will have a 99% chance of joining, but could potentially not make the team, although extremely slim. Nico is introduced with a starting salary of 23.5 million, and having a higher salary than Shido's original offer, 
and he got a small bump after developing Metavision 2. The slim reason he won't make it is because of his age and physique. Nico has gone bigger if you compare him to the beginning, but he's still fairly short and the youngest character in the program. The World Cup has an age requirement, and so I had to double check if he was even eligible to play. We know he was 15 at the beginning of Blue Lock, but his 16th birthday is in February, and so I think he'll just be old enough to play. The best defender we have seen in Blue Lock is Aiku, who has the second highest salary for his team, in an impressive game against Bastard. He has both the physicals and IQ to be the best, and will likely be the primary centre back coming into the World Cup. My only concern is that he is half Japanese and quarter Swedish and German, with his hometown being from Sweden. I don't know enough about citizenship to know if this means anything, but seeing as he wants to help Blue Lock grow, and I think there's still a 99% chance of him playing. The third Ubers defender is Ayu. He is the standard centre back played for Blue Lock with his great size and aerial reach. He also had a higher salary increase than Nico, and just under Aiku's current salary. The only reason I say he isn't 100% is because he kinda got shafted in the Ubers match. But seeing as how prominent he has been, there's still an extremely high chance he makes the roster. From Bastard Munich we have Corona, who already has a good salary now. He did get subbed off during the Ubers match, and so his playtime did get reduced. But since he'll still play 3 games and likely win them, he will end up with a top 23 salary. My slight concern is his limited character development, but I don't see the author introducing him so late into the story just to ignore him, and so I'm confident he will make it. Raichi is the other member who has an extremely high chance. He didn't match his hype in the Ubers game, but still ended up with an okay salary. I'm fully expecting Lorenzo to play against Isuki and Raichi at the U20 World Cup, and so I'm confident Raichi will make it. My slight concern is his salary isn't that high currently, and only has one game left, but that being said he will still likely make the roster. As for PXG, we have Karasu, who is tightly coupled with Hiyori's backstory. He will likely have played all 4 matches, and already has the top 23 offer. My issue is that Rin steals everyone on PXG's spotlight, but that shouldn't affect his final ranking too much. And there's also the fact he hasn't been as important as the other guaranteed characters. The other PXG player who will likely play is Shido. Since the top 23 make it, he is way too talented not to get a final salary in this range. The only issue is that Shido has a violent tendency, and couldn't link up with any other blue lock player. I could also potentially see him go to the same club as Sai and not play in the U20 World Cup, assuming Sai doesn't either, but he will still likely make this roster. With that being said, that's the 18 core players of the team who should theoretically make it, assuming they all intend to play in the U20 World Cup. There may be one or two that take club offers instead, but for the most part these 18 are safe bets for the final roster. And so that only leave 5 spots left, and so the next characters personally have around an 80% chance of surviving. Batra's only real teammate is Atoya. He will have played 4 games total, the only problem is that he will likely get stomped against PXG, and so he will only have the Manshine match to prove himself. The other problem is he was relegated to Batra's assistant, benched in the U20 match, and has the least character development of the top 6. With an abundance of strikers and forwards already, and potentially going winless, his chances aren't guaranteed. The benefit with Atoya is that he is skilled and was ranked 4th previously, while being the only notable Barca player. He also gets a lot of extra chapter stuff. For example, he went to the arcade with everyone else during the break, and was included in the recent Halloween colour spread. The other person who has a good chance to make it is Tokomitsu. Similar to Atoya, he was in the latest colour spread and hung out with everyone during the break before the NEL. So far he is the 4th high salary for PXG and made the temporary top 23. We also see him have a volume cover and a number 20 jersey which will be important for later in the video. The issue with Tokomitsu was although he was great in the second selection, he has been sidelined since. The other character who has a good chance is Sendo, especially since he got the latest volume cover although I'm still skeptical of his fate. Sendo in the latest game got benched because of a cramp, and thus limiting his screen time, and so he is currently only valued 20 million, with only one game remaining. My issue was with him getting subbed off, they basically had the Drago guy take his spot and roll, and so him getting subbed out could mean he barely makes the final roster and plays 24th. The author may have deliberately taken him out for a reason, especially since he got the lowest increase out of any player in the third round offers 
of an increase of only 2.5 million. And with his final game happening in the fourth round, he may not get a big enough boost from the final round offers, and end up missing out of the top 23. As for his gameplay, he hasn't done much, and it hasn't entered flow in his key moments, or in the actual game. The only time he's had an aura is when the U20 team were walking out, and he just didn't show it in the Ubers game. With an abundance of forwards and midfielders for the team so far, I question how he'll fit in the team over someone else. If he could be played, I think there'll always be a better player on the team than him. However, he has had two colour spreads since the Ubers match has started, and is a character who actively talks before and during the game. The other benefit is he has the number 18 jersey, which I'll explain later of its importance. He does have a good chance, but it's his spot to lose. Ubers not playing the final game means the other four teams will have their players trying to overcome his previously defined final salary. And so if he is given a low salary, then characters like Ikiguri and Kiora will be working hard in the final game to clutch and steal his spot. If all the above people make it, that only leaves two remaining spots, but we still have a few characters left. And so these characters will have around a 65% chance of making it, with likely one of these three not making it. I think Zantetsu has a good chance to make it, but he'll be fighting for one of the final spots. He was the one at the end of the U20 match who wished he could play. We saw him at the beginning of the NEL highlighting his future relevance, and we saw his dissatisfaction with his current salary as he didn't break the top 23. It feels like his character is set up to develop more and make the roster. The issue is similar to Tokomitsu where after his debut match in the first selection, he hasn't been that relevant. One of the most mysterious and hyped up characters, Kiora, fits in this category. He was meant to play in the Ubers game, and will only have one final game to prove his worth. He has been hyped up in both the spin-off manga and the main story, and potentially could play a pivotal role in the next PXG match. But he would need to do something important to get a salary higher than other people who already have existing salaries. It's an uphill battle for him to make this roster. But the fact he didn't play also benefits him. If Kuro barely misses out of the top 23, it could be seen as unfair as Hiori essentially stole his spot the previous game. The other thing on his side is that we just got his character profile and extra chapter, plus him on the Halloween cover and so there's a decent chance he makes it. I've mentioned previously on this channel that I think Ikiguri will get the 23rd highest salary and barely survive and luck his way through, with him ending with a 30 million salary which is a homage to his original ranking. Like Kiora, this is difficult to reach for one game in his current skill level. Ikiguri trains a lot, and it's a check of gun that he doesn't utilize it in this art. You will see his militia foul and what he can do in the next 20 days. Another benefit for him is that he is one of the author's favorite characters, and for some plot armor and luck reason, he will likely reach 23rd. Alternatively, Ikiguri's dream is just not to go back to his temple, and so getting any salary or offer will be fine with him as long as he becomes pro. He doesn't need to play in the U20 World Cup, but I still do think he will. Even Isagi says that his ego is fine. Playing a game is sufficient for a salary. Just look at Fukaku who legit didn't touch the ball and still got offered 5 million. But the way Ikiguri has been written is that he will actually actively contribute in the match and get a good offer. And before everyone says he is trash and doesn't deserve to make the final roster, please just wait until after the PXG match before making those comments because I promise you, he will cook, and he will exceed your expectations. The next character I will say has a chance is Narase, but still an unlikely chance, which I'm guessing around 35%. He currently got the lowest bid of starting players, but he does have the benefit of playing against FC Barca next, which is a free win, and if he does well, his salary will go up. He'll also play in the final game and potentially do something like stop Hiori and Isuki, and so his bid potentially could reach the top 23. An issue with him is we still don't know his specific talent, and all we've been told is Isuki saying he isn't good at passing. He did find a way to link up with Isuki, with him admitting they couldn't have won without Nanase, but his skills aren't displayed well yet, which could be a good thing if he develops something in the match, like a protagonism eye, or bad if he remains a fodder with no niche. But a benefit of why he may join is that he also gets a decent amount of background panels, which may increase his chances. Since his portrayal isn't that good, he will likely fight for one of the final slots on the roster. The next batch of characters I'm going to call the 20%, aka the should make it in real life but likely won't. The U20 team requires 3 goalies as FIFA guidelines state, but the issue is that our only notable goalie is Gagamaru, and I guess Fukaku. 
However, the 23 going is said to be automatic based on salary, and so Ego may not even care for a spare goalie. The main roster should only have 21 players, and so the author making it so only one goalkeeper, aka Gagamaru, is also possible, and completely ignores this rule. That being said, Fukaku is shown to be an existing goalie in the U20 and Ubers matches. He had a small save, but in general hasn't been that good, and a fairly fodder character since his introduction. But if they need a backup goalie, he is the option. And so Fukaku making it depends on if the 3 goalie rule will be followed. The other goalkeeper I'm guessing will be Andoji. Personally, I think he has a chance to be a goalkeeper for PXG. They are the final team, and if all the Blue Lock players and Chappie play for PXG at once, there's a good chance that one of the Blue Lock players plays in goals. If he is the goalie, I'd guess he would be a sweeper keeper in particular, and would have a higher chance than Fukaku. However, if Andoji just plays as a centre back, then his chance of making it through becomes significantly lower. Although he will likely play in the match against FC Barca and the final game as PSG add more players. The reason I think he'll be a goalkeeper and potentially important is that in the third selection, he was with a lot of the other PXG and Barca de Munich players. The fact his name in Doji is similar to Endo the goalkeeper from Inazuma 11, and the fact he displays his muscles and height gives goalkeeper and centre back vibes. And if any of the 10 known PXG players would play as a goalkeeper, I would assume it would be him. Itoshi Sai is the only non Blue Lock member to mention. He was the U20's best player, which will also be a reason why he won't make the roster. He should realistically play, because if he is like Kaiser, his salary will easily clear a majority of the players, and since he is incredibly skilled, Japan will be one of the favourites to win. The concern is that the team may be perceived too strong, and the narrative will be less of Isagi and Blue Lock struggling to win, and more the prodigy Sai with the Japan team losing the underdog perception. He creates a big power vacuum, and so I don't think he will play. This partnered with the fact he'll steal screen time of other midfielders like Hiyori and Ryo means I think he won't bother participate. And the main reason why Sai isn't that high for me is that the top 23 automatically join, and in the latest ranking Tokomitsu at rank 23 looks happy that he made it, Then it's implied that Sai won't be included in this top 23 threshold. That being said, he could still make it, but since the way Ego talks about that top 23, and the author not mentioning Sai participating, then I have my doubts of him joining. There are a few characters that have a non-zero chance of making it, and so I'm guessing with a 3-5% chance each. If you've read the author's other series Kamasama game, then a spoiler is that they had a complete random character survive into the final round. So these characters have a slim chance, but I wouldn't completely write them off if he wants to create a completely random character like his other manga. Firstly, Hiragi. He managed to make the U20 bench despite going 2-5 in the third selection. We also see him manage to get a salary in his second game, and with his two remaining games against the two other weakest teams, he could potentially make it. One thing to note is that we did see him train with Raichi against Nico and Yukamiya, which could hint to his potential position, and we also haven't seen a good fourth clear team player yet. Next is also from Manchine, and that's Neo. He was seen to be right after IQ and Sendo in command of the old team, and although he got a low salary, the current roster so far doesn't have many centre back options, and so he could potentially slide in. The complete meme character Nishioka I would say falls in this category too. Similar to the previous two, he will be up against the two worst teams assuming he gets subbed in the next match. Ever since his introduction, he has been hidden and a mysterious player and I want to emphasize this. Heck, the official Twitter posted earlier this year to watch out for him soon, but if you pay attention in the manga, he only appears in the first chapter. Every other time he appears off screen. Like if you look at the Manchine training sessions, you also notice he gets deliberately sidelined all the time. There's so many panels where he's the only missing blue lock player, or at the very back of the team. If the author wants him to continue being a joke of a character, he could make the top 23, but realistically this will probably be the end for him. Wanama is the last one who could make it, although highly unlikely. He got a salary although beneath Neo and Hiroki, but he is a character we've known for a while, but not relevant since the first selection. Bringing up Kami-sama game again, one of my shares similarity with the Sanada twins, as they were initially portrayed as violent, and soon the talking one dies. Freed from his brother, the quiet one develops, which by the way turned into one of my favourite character developments, but unfortunately gets killed right before the final round. That being said, he has a slither of a chance of making it, but I wouldn't completely write him off yet. The only other Ubers player I can see make it is Ishikari. He made the U20 bench and did well in his third selection game, 
and by size alone makes him a valuable centre back. Unfortunately, he joined the only team with other good centre backs, and it ended up as a disappointment as he didn't play. With one game left, it's very unlikely he makes a high enough bid, but he does have a slight chance. Talking about disappointments, Nero has to be the biggest one from Bastard. From having the third highest stats coming in, to having his original position stolen and prioritised by both Kiora and Corona. He has been sidelined the hardest, but with a likely win, his chances won't be zero, as long as he does well in the PXG match. Meanwhile, the other U20 fullback Darai will play three games. Although he is semi-important in the U20 match, the fact Barca will likely lose all their games means his chance isn't too high, even if he had a decent first offer. Yuzu is a possibility, although the lower so far. We know nothing about him besides he lost 5-2, but unlike Hirugi, he didn't make the team, and we know he finished 98 in the second selection. He has no notable feats or skills, and so there's no reason for him to make the roster. But the one benefit is he plays in the final game, which slightly wavers his chances from zero. And so for convenience sake, I will rank them on who I think has the highest chance to least in this section. Now the next characters are between 0 and 1%, who basically won't make it. And when you consider they're up against the other 30 plus characters, the chances are basically non-existent. The final PSG player is Cho, who just straight up sucks and he won't make it. He was a trash striker in the U20 match while being one of the least important members on the roster. And since we have an abundance of strikers already, I see no slots for him despite having two potential games left. Germany don't seem to have any as they go undefeated and are the main team we follow, and so all 10 have a chance. But as for England, I don't see Sunzaki making it. He has a great design, but actual feats and skills haven't been shown, besides him losing in his third selection game. He does have two games left on Manchine, but he's the most forgettable and fodder character of the lot, and so I don't see him making it. The other player is Saramadara, who has a sick name and has shown some dialogue and personality, but as for actual relevance and skill, he hasn't displayed anything worthy, especially if you consider his third selection performance. In the same loss with Saramadara, we have Shiguma, who also didn't contribute in the match, but potentially being the worst Ubis member, he won't make the team. The only Ubis member who could be worse is the gross Afro man Tanaka, who was introduced early and that's about all he has going for him. He got stomped by Ishikari in the third selection match, and with one match remaining, both Shiguma and Tanaka basically had no chance of making the roster. The final team is Spain, and they'll likely have a lot of people here. With two games to go and likely four losses, I don't see any of the fodders making the top 23. The only one who has a chance now would be Hayate, but although he does have a top 23 salary now, I don't think he will make the final 23. He was like the 7th most important U20 member, and so narratively wise I don't see him making it over the other 30 or so characters mentioned before. The roster is very tight with spots, and so I expect him to get a decent salary but never make the final roster. If we're talking about U20 fodder, then Wakatsuki takes the cake. With the worst design and getting subbed off, I see no reason to ever keep him, and wouldn't be shocked if he gets the absolute lowest offer. At least with Kitsuna Zato, he has some dialogue and a more unique design, but that won't even save him as he is also a bad striker, and so I don't expect any of these U20 players to make the cut. As for the blue lock members on the roster, Sokra has a slim chance if he plays as a goalkeeper, and the fact he was ranked 20, plus the potential in the spin-off with Ryo. But realistically, he doesn't seem that good, especially since with Yuzu, they lost 2-5 and also didn't make the bench. Haichi is similar, as he also has a low number, and if my second selection video was correct, he may be a bit more relevant if he was part of Kiora's original team. That being said, he hasn't really done or said anything, besides win his third selection game, where he didn't even make the bench. He is probably one of the most likely of the batch, but I just don't see him making the top 23. Finally, Himazu. He just is a fodder and there's nothing to his character. He has no dialogue and only a loss to his name. The FC Barca boys do have two games, so it isn't impossible, and we may see them get salaries in the fourth round, but their chances look grim. Now that we've established the probability of each individual character, we can use an educated guess on the potential final 23. I also want to point out the two potential hints in determining the final roster, firstly being the volume covers, and secondly being the NEL jersey numbers. I believe that the 23 characters who make the final roster will each get a volume cover by the end of the PXG, vs Barca de Munich game. As for the numbers, a lot of players have a unique number in the NEL, and in general, and so we can guess who makes it based on their number. And so using their jersey numbers and volume cover, it's time to predict their members. 
For example, Chigiri constantly has the number 4 due to its meaning in Japan, and so for the U20 World Cup I believe he'll keep this number. Isagi has worn a number 11 jersey for the majority of the series, and feels like it's his dedicated number, and so for convenience sake I'll keep it. Gagamaru will have a number 1 jersey as it appears all goalkeepers in the U20 World Cup in 2019 reserved that number for them. Depicted with a lucky number 7, Naki will rep that number for the main roster. Conversely, Baro wore the unlucky number 13 in both the NEL and U20 match and so there's a good chance he continues wearing that jersey in the future. Meanwhile, Ryo has been denoted the number 14 in both matches, which is also Nagi's number which I don't think is a coincidence. Batra is constantly a factor of 8 and that's his primary number since the first selection. Hiyori wore a number 23 jersey in both his backstory and the current NEL, and so I'm assuming he'll continue repping that number. Raichi wore a number 22 jersey and we haven't seen anyone else wear that number, and so I think he will continue. Corona wears a number 16 jersey which is also available, and since he's almost guaranteed, I think he'll keep it despite Yuri wearing it in the U20 match. Meanwhile, Yuka Mia currently has the number 15 jersey for Bastard Munich, while a number 5 in the U20 match, and so it's hard to pick which one, but because of recency bias and the fact no one else has 15, I bet he'll continue using that number. And the real number 5 this time will actually be Kunigami. He has been ranked 50 in both the second selection and the NEL, but the numbers don't go that high. And so I'm guessing he'll be number 5 as it's just 50 without the 0. Alternatively, he could get the number 9 jersey like the first selection, which also shares the same number as Noah, and known as the striker's number. The other two strikers are Rin and Shido. Rin was ranked 10 in the U20 match in high school, but number 9 in PXG. Meanwhile, Shiro is ranked 99 currently, but 13 when he played for Japan. But since 13 is taken by Baro, then he needs a new number. And so if Kunigami wears 5, then I'm guessing Rin will wear 10 and Shiro 9. As for the defenders, we'll likely have Nico, Ayu and Aiku, and since the main centre backs usually wear these low numbers, we can take an estimated guess. Ayu is given a number 17 jersey for Ubers, although for the most part he used to be number 2. Meanwhile, Aiku has a number 23 jersey for Ubers, but that seems reserved for Hiyori, and so I think Aiku will continue using his old number 2 jersey when he played for the U20 roster, while Ayu keeps his updated number. And then Nico, as the other defender whose current jersey number exceeds the available options, can wear the number 3, as he ranked 53 previously and wore number 3 in the U20 match. As the defensive midfielder, Karasu wore a number 6 jersey previously, and I'm guessing he will again. And with that being said, our primary roster has been accounted for and there's 5 spots left, with numbers 12, 18, 19, 20 and 21. My first observation is with Tokamitsu, who was seen as the 4th best member on PXG, who was seen to wear a number 20 jersey, and since he also has a volume cover, I believe he'll make the final roster. And so that leaves the missing numbers 12, 18, 19 and 21. Well Sendo wears the number 18 jersey, and with the latest volume cover, his chances are higher, and he may continue wearing this number. But if Ikiguri gets in the top 23, and if he steals the spot from him, then I can also see him with this number, as he used to have number 108. A lot of players with numbers 12 and 21 are goalkeepers in the U20, and so if the author follows the goalkeeper rule, then I'm guessing Fukaku will be 21, and then Doji 12, but since I think there's a higher chance he doesn't care, and ignores this rule, I think these numbers will be reserved for others. For number 21, it could be Kira, as he wore this in the second selection, and maybe wears it in the PXD game. It could also be Zantetsu, as he has number 29, which doesn't fit, and not having a specific number in general. It could be 3 multiplied by Nagi 7, so the original trio from Team V will be 7, 14, and 21. Realistically, Otoya should make it over a lot of characters, but his numbers 9, 13, and 33 are all taken. And so I googled his name, and one meaning was second of the 10 celestial stems, which sounds a bit similar to 12, but at this point I'm just reaching for a number to give him. And then the final 19 jersey could be Zentetsu's, as he was 29 previously, or another random characters. And so I can think of a few different options for the final rosters. Firstly the top 23, which are the best players with Ikiguri getting a salary and becoming pro, although not making the final roster. Then another option is the roster with Ikiguri surviving, aka the Buddha Luck roster. There's also the goalkeeper rule roster with Fukaku and Doji as backup goalies. 
There's also the potential Psy roster with him joining, although I don't think this is very likely. There's the Nanase Copium roster based on the image at the beginning of the NEL, plus the missing characters like Corona who weren't introduced yet. And there's a roster where some players take offers, and so we get an unexpected Final 23 make it. If I had to guess, I'll say the first two are the rosters with a 99% chance of happening, with the top 23 realistically being the first option, but I have to back my boy Ikiguri. That being said, that's all, and so be praised, take care, and subscribe if you haven't.